morning, everyone. Welcome to a beautiful, another beautiful day in uh, Gulfport, Florida. It's a little windy, so uh, I hope you can hear me projecting and everything through this. But uh, we decided to come outside and, and come down to the Trolley Market Square where they've just recently put out a Gulfport trolley. Yeah, thank you, camera person. That's nice shots there. Uh, this is one of our, on our uh, runs and our walks. We go past here a lot. So I'm like, ah, oh, let's go down to the Gulfport trolley and, and uh, stream live from there tonight. So I'm glad that you're all joining me tonight for our seven o'clock scripture and a uh, little lesson time. And I hope you're all doing well, that you're happy and healthy and that everyone uh, near you and dear to you is, is all, all doing well. So I uh, wanted tonight to kind of piggyback off of what I talked about. I guess it was Tuesday night when I was last with you. We talked about love and how love is a verb and how I see a lot of love within our church and extension of our church, people out in our community doing nice and beautiful and wonderful things for people during this pandemic. And uh, I got to thinking about, well, that's easy, right? I mean, most of the time it's pretty easy. Let the motorcycle go by. Most of the time it's pretty easy. It's people we know, it's people we love. Um, so it's easy to show that love. But what happens when we have to love the unlovable? Ooh, yeah, I know. Sorry. But we're going to go there tonight. We have to love and remember to love the unlovable people. And this reminds me of a story. The reason I'm laughing is because I'm reminded of a story of, of me. And I'm going to throw myself out there. You guys are going to see how imperfect I am, which is, should be no surprise to you. But I just want to make sure and clear that up by this story. So I used to have a commute from work when I worked for the bank from Bradenton up to St. Petersburg or Gulfport to my home. A lot of times it was just a 30, 35 minute drive, but man, during spring break, um, spring training baseball, oh, my commute would sometimes get to be an hour to an hour and a half. And I remember one time I was talking to a dear friend of mine who lives in Sarasota, great, great Christian lady, and I've known her for 20 years now. And she said, well, I was in the car and I gotta say, I don't know what it is about a car, but sometimes it just doesn't bring out the best in people. And I'm one of those individuals. And in this particular day, it was a long day at work. The commute is not looking good at all. And quite frankly, people are just being, I guess, morons for lack of a better word. They're just being really not good drivers. And I'm just trying to get home, man. I just wanna get home. So I'm on the phone with my dear friend from Sarasota. We're just chatting, yakking away. I'm driving along on four, Business 41, trying to get out of Bradenton. Because once I get out of Bradenton, it's smooth sailing from there. But it's bumper to bumper traffic, no accidents, just sheer volume. And all the snowbirds are down and probably a baseball game had let out in Bradenton. That was just a horrible combination for me. So I'm on the phone. We're talking about who knows what. And someone does something stupid ahead of me and I go, hey moron or a few other choice words i'm not sure exactly what i said but i said something that wasn't really nice and i quite honestly i degraded the person i was very unloving i did not act in a very christian manner to this person who just did a very what in my opinion ridiculous maneuver on the roadway and my friend without skipping a beat there was a little bit of a pause and she goes well that's probably not how god feels about them but and I was like, oh, snap, totally schooled right there on the spot. She was totally right. That is not at all how God feels about them. I could call them whatever name I wanted to in the book, but my God and my Savior love that person just as much as they love me. And it made me think of, and I love the Bible verse out of Psalm 139. One, uh, Psalm 139, 13 and 14 is what I'm going to read for you tonight. And we're going to change out some pronouns. Oh, pronouns? I think that's what they are. We're going to change out some words here to kind of drive this point home. But uh, Psalm 139, 13 says, For you created my inmost being. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I love that Bible verse. I've heard it a million times and I agree with it. And it makes me feel good and gives me confidence in myself to know that I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. But I also have to remember that that person that was driving on the road that I didn't agree with his uh, maneuver of driving is also fearfully and wonderfully made. And God loves him just as much as he loves us or her, whoever it was, 
He loves that person just as much as he loves me. And for me to be a true Christian and to live out what it means to follow Christ and Jesus, I have to remember that. So when I'm in a car and I still mess up in a car and say things that I shouldn't to other drivers, all I hear is my friend in the back of my head saying, ah, that's not how God sees them because that's not how God sees them. So the people that are unlovable to us, to love them, we have to do our very best. And it's so incredibly hard. We have to do our very best to see them how God sees them. And God sees them as that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. So instead of the verse even saying, I am fearfully, wonderfully made, we can change it to we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Or even better yet, we can say they are fearfully and wonderfully made. And maybe when someone does something that you don't particularly agree with, or they're unlovable at the moment, if they get too close to you in the grocery store, you know that six foot thing that we're loving, if they are two feet from you, or they say something that they shouldn't, or a friend says something that they shouldn't, or whatever someone might do to you that makes them unlovable, just remember that they are fearfully, wonderfully made. And Jesus didn't do what he did just for me. He did it for everybody, including those people out in this world that we might find a little bit unlovable. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for loving us and for creating us such beautiful people, God. And I'm so grateful that I am fearfully and wonderfully made by you and that you knit me together in my mother's womb, God. Help me to remember at all times that everyone is like that, that everyone is beautiful in your eyes, that everyone is worth you dying for, God, so we can make this world an even better place. God, it's so easy sometimes to love certain people, those people that we agree with, we have common things, uh, commonalities and things that we all do together and we enjoy each other's company, but help us to be even better than that and not just love those people, but to love those people that kind of annoy us, get on our nerves or drive like we don't want them to or say things that we don't want them to, God. Just help us to be better people to everyone across the board. Help me every single day and help us every single day to love those unlovable people. God, I just pray right now for our country, for this world, with this pandemic, God, I ask that you just put an end to it. God, I just help, I pray for the doctors and the nurses and all the people that are on the front line. I pray for the people that are doing research to come up with some kind of solution to this, to this virus, God. Just be with them, help them, guide them, direct them, help them use their intelligence to do a great thing, which would be to find an end to this and a, a way to stop this pandemic from spreading. And God, as we're all getting a little stir crazy and states are starting to do different things and open up things, just help us all do the right thing and be smart, whatever that is, God. Just help us to make right decisions for ourselves and our family so that we don't get sick and we don't pass it on to other people. God, I pray for those individuals who have lost loved ones, the 60-some thousand people just in the United States and the people worldwide, God. Just give them comfort and peace during this time. God, we love you, and we thank you so much for loving us even when we're unlovable, God, because I know you do. I know there's times that I'm unlovable, and everyone that's praying right now is unlovable, and I thank you for loving us through that. Help us to show that same kind of love to those unlovable people in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, that's it for tonight's session. The 7 o'clock will be back here tomorrow night, Friday um, at 7 o'clock and on Saturday. Don't forget that Sunday we will be up at the church as a ministerial team from 5 to 6.30. If you want to swing by the church, you can wave and say hi. We will say our safe distance away from you, but we would love to see your smiling face if you would love to see our smiling face. Church, be safe, be happy, be healthy, take care of yourself, and we will see you tomorrow night at 7 o'clock again. Love you all. Peace out.